I think in this century, we'll probably pick up signals. Signals from an extraterrestrial civilization. A unique alignment of the outer planets, which only takes place once every 176 years, was utilized by the Voyager missions. By making the best use of their limited fuel, spaceships can gravitationally slingshot from one planet to the next thanks to this alignment. Nobody anticipated how crucial the Voyager spacecraft would still be more than 45 years after it first set out on its mission to study the outer planets of our solar system. Beyond expectations, the probe has continued to function and provide data about its return trips to Earth. Let's take a good, long look at the Voyager spacecraft, including the golden recordings that each Voyager carries with messages for extraterrestrial life on them. Will aliens ever make contact with them? Let's find out. Two spacecraft launched from Earth in 1977 are currently traveling through space at a speed of more than 30,000 miles per hour. More than any other man-made object, they are both several billion miles from Earth. One of them left the solar system on August 25, 2012, becoming the first spacecraft to do so. Coded communications are sent to prospective alien civilizations by Voyager 1 and 2. They have already provided scientists with a wealth of knowledge regarding the helio sheath, the solar system's outermost layer. But none of this was even intended for them. The Voyager spacecraft were designed to pass by the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus, and closely examine them for the first time in human history. The spacecraft was a complete success, making significant strides in planetary research. They only moved on to become the most extensive explorers of Earth after completing their initial mission. But the fact that the missions were even conceivable was due to incredibly excellent fortune and timing. At the same time, the Voyager project almost failed before it even got off the ground due to a similar stroke of terrible luck. These challenging missions, which were the result of recent developments in the science and mathematics of orbital paths, were almost abandoned in favor of the pricey space shuttle program. Today, almost every unmanned space mission relies on the knowledge and expertise the Voyager spacecraft have accumulated. The American space program went through a transitional era in the 1970s. As the Apollo program came to an end, NASA was attempting to determine the future of manned spaceflight. The Mariner missions sent spacecraft past Mars, Venus, and Mercury, as well as occasionally into their orbits, allowing us to learn more about the inner planets. There were unofficial plans to launch a Mariner mission to some of the outer planets, but doing so would require chemical rockets, which would take at least 15 years to develop. During this time, significant developments in the field of gravity-assisted orbital routes were also occurring. The core notion is that a spacecraft can use the gravity of a neighboring planet to give it a significant boost in velocity, as long as the spacecraft maintains the correct orbit, even if the math and physics are somewhat complicated. The gravitational pull is stronger and the boost is greater as a planet's mass increases. That implied that a spacecraft could utilize Jupiter's gravity as a slingshot to travel out to study the more distant planets once it had reached Jupiter, the most massive planet in our solar system. Gary Flandro, an engineer, predicted in 1965 that the outer planets will align in the middle of the 1970s, allowing a spacecraft to visit them all using a series of gravity-assisted boosts. In fact, this specific alignment wouldn't happen again until 176 years, making it a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. It was a remarkable coincidence that this mission's technical feasibility was developed a few years before the planets aligned to make it possible. The Grand Tour was an ambitious project that originally called for sending a number of probes to all of the outer planets. NASA, however, was preparing to create the Space Shuttle, and the project's projected budget was close to $900 million in 1972. The Grand Tour was scrapped in favor of a mission profile with lower expectations as the enormous expenses associated with the shuttle's development grew closer. The Mariner-Jupiter-Saturn mission, MJS, would be an expansion of the Mariner program. The new probes eventually adopted the name Voyager. They were built on the Mariner platform and upgraded with knowledge obtained during Pioneer 10's 1973 flyby of Jupiter. In 1977, the design was finalized. Optimistic NASA engineers believed that if the initial trip to visit Jupiter and Saturn, and some of their moons, was successful, 
they could be able to employ gravity-assisted trajectories to reach Uranus and Neptune. The notion of the Grand Tour came to life once more. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 would be launched a few weeks apart, according to the final Voyager mission plan. Voyager 1 would scan and take pictures as it flew quite near Jupiter and several of its moons. Voyager 2 would likewise pass by Jupiter, albeit at a little closer altitude. Both probes would be propelled towards Saturn by Jupiter's gravity if all went according to plan. Then, Voyager 1 would explore Saturn, specifically its rings and the moon Titan. Voyager 1's trajectory would thereafter lead it away from all other planets, out of the ecliptic, the plane of the planet's orbits, and ultimately, out of the solar system. While this was happening, Voyager 2 would go to Saturn and several of its moons. It would then be propelled by Saturn's gravity to go to Uranus and Neptune before also leaving the ecliptic and leaving the solar system, if it was still functioning correctly, when that was finished. This was thought to be a long shot, yet amazingly, everything went according to schedule, which took off first. On August 20th, 1977, Voyager 2 was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, using a Titan Centaur rocket. On September 5, 1977, Voyager 1 was launched. The numbering is inverted. Why? Voyager 1 overtook Voyager 2 on the way to the outer planets and arrived at Jupiter first. The numbering does not correspond to the launch sequence because NASA believed that if Voyager 2 began transmitting first, the public would get confused. Despite having a lifetime mission cost of over $750 million, the Voyager spacecraft had returned enough scientific material by 1989 to fill 6,000 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Voyager is largely responsible for the knowledge we have of the outer planets, not to mention the countless pictures taken from viewpoints people have never previously encountered. Each Voyager probe, according to NASA, transmits data at a rate that is around 38,000 times slower than a 5G internet connection and has about 3 million times less memory than a smartphone. The most astounding findings made by Voyager were moons, not planets. Launched to investigate the planets, the Voyager probes instead came to appreciate the beauty of the solar system's moons. Forty years ago, humankind had, at best, a hazy grasp of the outer planets of the solar system, including Jupiter's turbulent atmosphere, Saturn's changing rings, Uranus's tilted axis, and Neptune's great dark spot. Then the solar system tour by the Voyager probes began. Voyagers 1 and 2 captured the outer solar system in all its beauty for the first time in hundreds of images. The legendary probes may have made their most startling discoveries by demonstrating to us that our own moon is one of the least intriguing natural satellites available, despite all that they revealed about the gas giant planets. Significant discoveries were made as a result of the Voyager probe's flybys of alien moons including active geology in the solar system's cold outer regions, volcanoes that shoot lava hundreds of miles into the air, and the first signs of surface lakes and rivers with flowing hydrocarbons. The scientific community was in utter confusion. These rocks were meant to be frozen, lifeless worlds. The outer moons suddenly became just as crucial to our comprehension of the solar system as the planets themselves when it was discovered that the opposite was true. The public's desire for further space exploration was stoked by those stunning photos of Jupiter and Saturn. Voyager provided additional information on a number of topics, including Jupiter's weather, the rings around Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon Io, the masses and densities of Saturn's moons, the atmospheric pressure on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, Uranus's magnetic field, and the great dark spot, a persistent weather system on Neptune that is as big as Earth. It was 1989 when Voyager 2 arrived at Neptune. Since the original mission's launch more than 10 years prior, several of the scientists involved had left their positions. Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus were all visited by Voyager in 1979, 1981, and 1986, respectively. The Voyager 2 spacecraft captured this image of the great dark spot on Neptune's surface in 1989. By 1994, the area, which was believed to be a swirling mass of gases, had vanished, only to be replaced by a second, comparable area. Voyager 1 unexpectedly discovered a tiny ring encircling the massive planet in March 1979, surprising NASA. It also discovered Thebe and Metis, two new moons, Along with Amalthea, Voyager 1 also returned in-depth images of Jupiter's large Galilean moons, 
Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Jupiter's moons were discovered by Voyager to be dynamic worlds, similar to the Pioneer spacecraft before it. Additionally, Voyager 1 discovered some fascinating information about these natural satellites. For instance, Io's numerous volcanoes and mottled yellow-brown-orange surface demonstrated that moons might have active innards, much like planets do. In addition, images of Europa returned by Voyager 1 show a surface that is largely smooth but is interrupted by lines, suggesting the presence of ice and possibly even an ocean beneath. Later observations and analysis have shown that Europa most likely contains a vast ocean of liquid water beneath its surface. This ocean may even be able to sustain life similar to that on Earth. On March 5, 1979, Voyager 1 made its closest approach to Jupiter, passing just 174,000 miles from the tumultuous cloud tops. The probe should then aim for Saturn at that point. Only almost a year later, in 1980, did scientists finally receive up-close views of Saturn. The ringed planet turned out to be just as unpredictable as Jupiter. The F-ring, a narrow structure identified by NASA's Pioneer 11 probe barely a year earlier, was one of Voyager 1's goals. Prometheus and Pandora, two new moons whose orbits hold the frozen material in the F-ring in a specified orbit, were discovered by Voyager's higher-resolution camera. Additionally, it captured photographs of numerous other Saturn moons and found Atlas and a brand new ring called the G-ring. The second largest moon in the solar system, after Jupiter's Ganymede, was a mystery to astronomers. Titan was only seen as an orange haze in close-up photographs, which sparked years of conjecture about its interior. Humanity wouldn't learn until the middle of the 2000s, thanks to images taken by the Huygens Atmospheric Mission of the European Space Agency from behind the haze. The primary mission of Voyager 1 came to an end with the encounter with Saturn. Then, as the one 590-pound probe accelerated toward interstellar space, attention turned to following it. However, Voyager 1 captured one of spaceflight's most famous images 20 years before it reached that milestone. The probe turned back toward Earth on February 14, 1990, and took a picture of the globe from 3.7 billion miles away. Earth appears as a small dot in the image, suspended in a ray of sunshine. The pale blue dot image stands out, reminding us that Earth is a small outpost of life in an incomprehensibly huge cosmos. Voyager 1 took dozens of other pictures that day, including five other planets and the Sun in a multi-image, solar system family portrait. In August 2012, Voyager 1 broke free of the heliosphere and sailed into interstellar space. The heliosphere is a vast bubble of charged particles that the Sun pushes around itself, the findings were made public after Voyager 1's plasma wave detector captured a strong solar explosion between April 9th and May 22nd, 2013. Electrons close to Voyager 1 vibrated because of the outburst. Researchers determined that Voyager 1's surroundings had a higher density than what is found immediately within the heliosphere from the oscillations. The fact that the electron density is larger in interstellar space than it is in the solar system seems incongruous. The electron density, however, is far lower at the heliosphere's edge than it is in nearby areas, according to researchers. The precise departure date was then determined by researchers using the data from Voyager 1 and was determined to be August 25, 2012. In addition to electron oscillations, the date was determined from the spacecraft's readings of charged solar particles. The probe observed a 1,000-fold decrease in these particles on that terrible day, which also happened to be the day Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong passed away, and a 9% rise in galactic cosmic rays, which originate from outside the solar system. Voyager 1 was then 121 astronomical units, AU, or 11.25 billion miles from the Sun. The typical Earth-Sun distance, or 1 AU, is roughly 93 million miles. Voyager 1 entered interstellar space and has since returned with a wealth of useful data on the environment there. Its findings revealed the extreme intensity of cosmic radiation as well as the interactions between charged particles released by the Sun and other stars. Engineers are still in awe of the spacecraft's capabilities. For instance, NASA reported in December 2017 that Voyager 1 has successfully oriented itself to talk with Earth using its backup thrusters. Since Voyager 1's flyby of Saturn in November 1980, 
The trajectory correction maneuver, TCM thrusters, had not been deployed. Since that time, the spacecraft has mostly swung into the proper orientation for communication with Earth using its regular attitude control thrusters. However, NASA made the decision to test the TCM thrusters when the attitude control thrusters' performance started to decrease, which may have prolonged Voyager 1's operational life. In the end, that test was successful. Other steps have been taken by the mission team to increase Voyager 1's lifespan. For instance, to conserve Voyager 1's limited power supply, they shut down the spacecraft's cameras shortly after the pale blue dot picture was shot. In the gloom of outer space, the cameras wouldn't capture anything anyway. The cosmic ray subsystem, the low-energy charged particles instrument, the magnetometer, and the plasma wave subsystem are the only four remaining scientific instruments on Voyager 1 after years of mission crew work to disable five further pieces of equipment. Similar steps were taken with Voyager 2. When Voyager 1 approaches the star AC plus 793888 in 40,000 years, it will have its next significant encounter. About 17.5 light years separate Earth from the star. However, Voyager 1 will likely stop gathering scientific data around 2025 because of a declining power supply. What if the Voyagers come across an advanced alien society in the future? We've left them a message. NASA believed it could be a good idea to include some sort of message to any intelligent aliens who might someday locate them after realizing that the Voyagers would eventually journey outside of our solar system. These messages were created by a group under the direction of Carl Sagan, an astronomer. They are stored on copper discs that have been gold-plated and etched to resemble vinyl record albums. A portion of the disc is dedicated to audio content, which includes a selection of music, greetings in 55 different languages, some of which are extremely obscure or long extinct, and various natural sounds. The discs also contain 122 images that are encoded as vibrations on the discs, along with decoding instructions. Each disc's cover plate features a number of symbols. A stylus and mounting platter are also included that represent the way the record is played back, the image start signal, the aspect ratio of the images, and a copy of the first image are described in the image decoding instructions, allowing the aliens to check their work. The picture is completed with a star map that makes Earth's location very evident. The fragment of uranium, 238 attached to the main bus next to the record can be examined by aliens if they are curious about how long Voyager has been traveling. The length of time the sample has been in space could then be determined by analyzing the isotope ratios, provided they are aware of the half-life of uranium, 238. When they play the album, what music will the aliens hear? Mostly traditional music from various countries, including African ritual music, Scottish bagpipes, and Native American chants. It also functions as a sort of classical music greatest hits compilation. The tracks that are most up-to-date are Johnny B. Good by Chuck Berry and a Louis Armstrong jazz song. Maps of Earth, photos of the other planets in our solar system, pictures of different animals, and even pictures of people are among the many different images on the record. A companion CD-ROM was published decades after Carl Sagan's book Murmurs of Earth, which he wrote about the record. The Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 plaques are comparable to the Voyager discs, though the designers of the Voyager discs took extra care to ensure that aliens could decode them. The information on the Pioneer plaque was beyond the comprehension of many Earth scientists. When the Voyager disc was discovered, several people expressed worry that any hostile aliens would have a map that would take them right to Earth. The situation isn't particularly urgent, though, as the Voyagers will spend tens of thousands of years in interstellar space before they are even close to another star. If the disks are ever discovered, they might be so far away in the future that people are already extinct. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.